Well, that onsen scene was um, something special. <laughs> he keeps the Excalibur sheath until it's time to awaken and set off on its quest for the Garden of Chaos. Sure, keep telling yourself that's it. <laughs> Just keep telling yourself that scene. Um, yeah, that was um, that was a very interesting scene. I, I I did get a kick out of it. It's it's like this whole aspect of everything that he doesn't care about, but this one insignificant thing that he does enjoy is hot springs. Which every I, I'm just waiting for the rice moment. Like he's obsessed with rice or something. Every Japanese character isekai into another world is obsessed with things of Japan. Which again, it's the normalcy. It's the normalcy aspect of an isekai. But yeah, that was a. <laughs> I feel for Alexia. That was um, a very interesting scene. I think it's like the amount of confidence that he has when he walks in the onsen and she's like, what the hell are you doing in here? And then she, after a while, she kind of accepts it <laughs> and then starts casually conversing with him like, oh, looks like you healed up pretty nicely. Yeah, I did. Oh, well, that's uh, that's great. He's like, is that a way a murderer, what is it, attempted murderer <laughs> compliments people? A murdering machine compliments people? But no, I think the, the really funny thing about the onsen scene was really more the fact that Elixia is just like giving all of this information about what's going on in the area, like exposition dump, which again, they make a joke later on about. The entire time Sid's us doing his usual, oh yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's like, I don't care, but I'm just kind of replying just so you think I'm listening. And it isn't until she mentions the idea that he needs to join the Crimson Order. <laughs> and then suddenly he jumps in and says, no, no, don't sign me up. Stop. <laughs> but no, the big question is that the onsen scene brings up is after a little, his little worm versus being a sheath Excalibur thing kind of goes through and he slaps himself like they typically do in the onsen. It's like this little tradition. Immediately, Alexia stands up and she looks at her towel and then she does the same. I'm assuming does the same thing because you hear a slap noise. <laughs> So it's like, I'm wondering if it's one of those things of like, like she's trying to follow his example because she knows that he's super strong. So she has to do it too. Or is <laughs> implying that Alexia is um, equipped with something. I don't know. I just, it's just a random pop <laughs> thought popped in my head. I know it's stupid. Moving on. But now we get a full glimpse of what this goddess trial thing is, which apparently my thought process is completely wrong. I thought it would be some trial to prove yourself of faith to the goddess or something like that. But no, it apparently they the doors of the sanctuary open up and warriors of the past come out and they challenge people they deem worthy, which turned out to be really stupid. <laughs> like it ended up being a whole ceremony of a bunch of people walking up and then just you know, saying, nope, they didn't select you, move on. Which is odd to think because technically the archbishop apparently controls it, or at least maybe this new archbishop has put something into play to control it. Maybe the old archbishop just allowed the door to open whenever it wanted to, whereas this new one that's feeling in was controlling it. Because he said that the door opened and he didn't tell it to. Which, yes, immediately my thought process is how are they going to manage to somehow pull Sid into fighting it, which apparently Rose signed him up for it. <laughs> I like how you have the sign line and you have Alexia over here and she's super mad about this replacement archbishop. He said to not do the inspection that they were there to do. At the same time, she just feels like I could just do it myself. But at the same time, that would, you know, cause a rift. But she's sort of like mad that this guy doesn't even mourn the death of the previous archbishop. But then it kind of her <laughs> her attention turns to Beta or not to me. <laughs> and not to me is over there just showing it off. Oob everywhere you know calling everybody's calling out to her she's super popular so you're having this rivalry out of nowhere appear that apparently alexia is jealous of natsume saying that she's you know super refined despite the fact that she's this rookie writer so she doesn't buy it and there's some corruption underneath her like there's the the nastiness is underneath the shell or whatever at the same time beta doesn't like alexia which i understand she's seen that alexia has been involved with you know sid in the past being a fake girlfriend and getting very clingy to him so she doesn't like her i just don't get why alexia doesn't like her but Again, that's the whole somebody's next to me and getting all the attention and I'm not. But I like the fact that <laughs> this is where I was getting to. I like the fact that like right behind, right next to them is Rose and she doesn't even care. Like she, her eyes are focused on Sid. Like these two are bickering and she's just like focused and she signs Sid up for the match. <laughs> 
Which I don't know why she would do that. I mean, yeah, I guess she does understand that Sid's special. Maybe she just wanted to get him out there to get him recognition. But at the same time, it's like, you beat the crap out of him over and over again. Why do you think that he's going to do something? But no, they call for Sid and he decides to create a distraction and then send Shadow in there. And yes, of course, he ends up activating the door, even though it wasn't activated. And Aurora, the Witch of Calamity comes out of it because, again, it's Sid. <laughs> Because it's Sid and he's overpowered main character, of course, the one of the strongest things that would destroy the world comes out of it. It was a decent fight. Um, I was kind of expecting him to tame her and she ends up becoming part of the harem, but apparently he just sees that she's shackled and then defeats her and that was pretty much it. I guess I should have assumed the fact that she wasn't really talking. She had no voice. It would assume that that they didn't even give her a say you. <laughs> That's how insignificant this character is. But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe Aurora will pop up in the next episode. But something interesting happened after he leaves because the entire barrier itself did, just breaks and it seems like everything's activating. Like this is maybe the door itself is going to open up again. And the interesting thing that happens is at some point you see Alpha and she says, the sanctuary answered his call. Sid, so it's true. You're, and then it cuts off. Now, this is dumb because I always hate these little, like, comments made by the Shadow Garden girls because they typically will see something that's not really there, but it's sort of implying this idea that Sid had the capability of opening the sanctuary. And so Alpha, obviously trying to figure out what happened in the sanctuary, is pleased. Possibly we'll be able to see what exactly happened between Olivia and the Demon Lord, Diablos, whatever thing. But again, is she implying the idea that she believed that Sid was there to do that? Or that Sid is special in some way and thus he was able to unlock it? This episode did sort of open up a lot of doors in the... I doors? <laughs> On the idea of, like, past isekais, possibly. I think, I think there was, unless I'm thinking of a different show, I think they've implied a couple things in the early episode that there was an indication here that there was possibly other people that may have been isekai in this world and brought some sort of culture into it. And that's why you see this sort of pseudo medieval times, pseudo Victorian style to it. But this episode obviously extends that in the idea that you have onsens here. And again, we've already kind of implied this idea of who is the goddess and is the possibility that she bestowed power upon isekais? Is Olivia possibly an isekai? I was kind of hoping that Olivia would be the one that would end up showing up in front of him and not this Aurora chick, just because I was kind of hoping to see some sort of glimpse in a possibility of another isekai. Not that I need it, but that's always kind of an interesting, clever way they can kind of spice up isekais. I don't typically like the idea that they're you know, at some point they end up running into another hero that is an isekai. That typically ends up being very boring. I've, I've yet to see a show that does that well. But I always end up liking the idea of there being some sort of history of another isekai that sort of influenced the world itself. Somebody that the main character can sort of relate to, but at the same time, they're not a presence that they have to deal with. There was another thing that kind of implied past isekais as well. Random guy walks in with a full-on, like, catcher's outfit it's like what what why i guess there's there technically could be baseball in this world but like it looks so modern day baseball outfit that it was like this doesn't fit this world at all i don't know maybe they're on the same aisle as the teaback ponsu i don't know it could be anyways that's my thoughts on episode 11 of eminence and shadow hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did make sure that like button down below comment let me know with all the episode if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content i do news reviews first impressions top list if it's anime it's pretty much here additionally if you want to support the channel more we have a patreon link a tips link and a super thanks button down below i greatly appreciate it but it does and y'all take care.